again, Peabody here. You're just in time to accompany Sherman and me as we journey back into the year 1778. What's our destination, Mr. Peabody? Kentucky, where we'll spend one or two exciting moments with that legendary frontiersman, Daniel Boone. My own bad gene, reacted instantaneously, teleporting us to the banks of the Kentucky River, and there stood a fort which was later become known as Boonboro. Did Daniel Boone build this fort, Mr. Peabody? Yes. I sure would like to meet him. Sherman's wish was granted. Certainly so. Can you stay out of here, Daniel Boone? We don't want you. Daniel Boone? That's me. Golly, Mr. Boone, how come you were thrown out of your own fort? Don't rightly know, sonny. Used to was that folks cotton to me. Now they just can't stand me. The wind suddenly changed its direction, bringing with it a highly unsavory aroma. Wow, something smells awful. I'll say it does. Wonder what it is. That cat of yours, Daniel, how long have you had it? A coonskin cap? Just got it last Tuesday. Would that be the day your friends began taking a, a dislike to you? Now that you mention it, yeah. Say, you don't suppose it's my coonskin cap that smells? Skunk skin, Daniel. Skunk skin. We buried Boone's pungent chateau and then tossed him into an elongated session in the waters of the Kentucky River. Do you think the folks in the fort will accept Mr. Boone now? I'm certain of it, Sherman. Well, suppose we take it in towel. We walked to the river's edge, but strangely enough, Daniel was nowhere to be seen. Well, his clothes are still on the bank, so he must be somewhere nearby. It wasn't until we examined the opposite shore that we discovered what had happened. Footprints! The tracks were easy to follow, and by late afternoon, we found where they were heading. An Indian village! Utilizing a small pool on cattle bars, we were able to ferret out Daniel Boone's whereabouts. Mr. Boone, it's us! Oh, hi there, Sonny! Quick, get behind our tree, and we'll help you escape! There's not an Indian anywhere near this tent. Can't do it, boy. Why not? No clothes. Them Indians captured me wrong. We couldn't leave him. Therefore, we had no alternative but to make our presence known to the Indian chief and try to win Daniel Boone's freedom. Let me get him straight. You challenge my best warrior to contest? That's right. I'll race him in a canoe, shoot arrows at a target, and send up smoke signals faster than he can. Mm. Sound them like Olympics. Okay, you got him deal. Two out of three win. If Warrior loses, Boone goes free. If you lose, you get him scalped. Oh, the first event was a canoe race. Both got him canoe. Both paddle across river. First man to reach other side is winner. On the word go. Go! We launched our canoe. Or at least the Warrior did. Well, get going, Mr. Peabody. He's oh. halfway across already. Patient, Chairman. The tide is due to go out any moment. And it did. <laughs> Carrying me across the river in nothing flat. Peabody one up. Now you try him test number two. We were handed bows and arrows. Forty feet away atop a tree stump stood two apples, one large, one small. Having lost the first event, my opponent received the opportunity of shooting first. He not only chose to shoot at the large apple, <coughs> he did it. My turn was next. That small apple contained a worm with a large appetite. So large that he consumed my target before I could draw a bead. Well, ha <laughs> ha, guess warrior win him. You both tied. That's not fair. Mr. Peabody didn't even shoot. Well, that's the way cookie crumbles. Now we have a smoke signal contest. One who sends message up fastest is final winner. While the warrior encouraged his fire, I adjourned to a nearby tent. And by using rocks, pieces of flint, and wood, managed to construct a somewhat makeshift typewriter. Of course, by this time, my adversary was sending puffs of smoke skyward. What are you going to do with a typewriter, Mr. Peabody? You'll see, Sherman. I connected a rubber tube from the typewriter to a small fire, and then I went to work. Without the slightest doubt, I was the winner. Indian no go back on word. You, boy, and Boone go free. That's wonderful, isn't it, Mr. Peabody? Yes, it is. However, Daniel still couldn't make a move without clothing. Here, Sherman, give the chief this dollar and buy that shirt and pants for Daniel. For a dollar? Is that all they cost? Certainly. That's why they call them buckskins.